of Facebook. <laughs> Just wait and see if anybody joins me. Um, oh, on this chilly Tuesday at lunchtime. Try and get my hands warm. Ah, somebody's watching. That's brilliant. Proves I'm live. Now, Facebook is telling... Oh, hi, Sylvia. Facebook is telling... Oh, hi, Mum. <laughs> that little competition between the both of you. You both popped on at the same time. Um, now, Facebook today is telling me that I have stars enabled. <laughs> Who knew? So, if you feel like giving stars, I don't even know what that means, but I've got an extra... Um, icon in the top of my screen that says stars enabled it's probably I am guessing something to do with if people who are watching give stars um, something to do probably something to do with algorithms and um, searching for me and all that jazz I really don't know and to be quite honest I'm here to do some crafting and I'm here to chat with you if you're watching live. So, yeah, stars, whatever. So, hello and welcome to Izzy's Crafty Bees. Hi, Renee. Um, I am Izzy Shashinsky and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK. And today I've got a really fun project to share with you. I was a little bit nervous because it isn't stamping. Um, but then I've become a little bit obsessed with the technique that I'm going to share with you today. So it's something a little bit different. I'm going to encourage you to have a go um, and let's t let's just see what happens. Um, you all know hopefully that I have a group as part of my Is This Crafty Bees page called the Crafty Beehive. If you've not already joined the Crafty Beehive then please do because that's where I encourage you to share your makes. If I've um, inspired you to, to make something during one of my lives or even if you've just made something and I set up that group during the first lockdown and I still hold the same idea and the same sentiment behind that group. If you are creating anything, whether it be a knitted jumper, a crocheted pair of pants, a cake, a cheesecake like Donna Thompson often shows us her baking, a garden, or indeed paper crafting. I'm happy for you to share your creativity in the Crafty Beehive. So, before I flick my camera around, I'm going to just share with you three golden moments since last week. Um, I think I was here last week. Yes, I was here last week. So, let's start. It was all about the weekend. Let's start with Friday night. On a Friday night, I go to a dancing class. And on Friday last week, it was the second week of four weeks where we learn a routine over four weeks. The first week, I found it really, really tough and I could barely walk on the Saturday. So I was kind of looking forward to the exercise, but not looking forward to the aches and pains. And also, one of the reasons I go to the dancing class is it's a really great workout for the mind and the head as well as the body because you're learning a routine and that means you've got to learn which order things go in and as we get older it's harder to learn things like that so I know I'm not ancient yet but it really does help and I really love the fact that I've got to learn steps and I went on Friday kind of just think expecting I'd just be punished basically physically and mentally and some of the stuff that I learned the week before had clicked and and it was great I actually turned the right way around instead of turning the wrong way around so that was a golden moment um Saturday was lovely uh the sun shone a little bit and then it hailstoned or was it Saturday? yes it was Saturday but I um worked again in the garden with Andrew on our big landscaping project that we're doing it's hefty work but whilst I was in the garden, I spotted that some of my spring bulbs were flowering and other bulbs were coming through. So that was just lovely to see. And then Sunday, really golden moment, um, a craftoon. So my Queen Bee Sampler craftoon was just fantastic. 
really lovely to spend time with uh, creative people, customers, and just chat and craft all afternoon and eat cake. Fabulous. I've just loved it. So they're my golden moments. What are yours? If you've had any golden moments since last week that you want to share, please pop them in the comments and chat between yourselves because I'm now going to aim to turn my camera around. And I'll say before we do, if I lose you, don't go away. I'll come straight back because Facebook sometimes doesn't let me do this. <gasps> yes, it's turned around. Marvellous. Right, let's have a look at what we've got. Apart from a big shadow, what's going on there with the big shadow? Let's get rid of that. So, this is the card I'm going to make today. Oh, Zoe, I can just, I'm still reading com uh, comments as I'm standing. You survived the dentist. Well done. Fantastic. That's, oh, oh I'm dentist phobic. Oh. So this is the card I'm going to make today. And these flowers, little watercolour ditzy flowers, it's, I'm going to share with you how I learned to paint these with confidence because I hear a lot from crafters. Oh, I can't do crafting. I'm not artistic. Um, I re you know, and then they come to stamp class and they realise that stamping, you don't have to be artistic. And I teach colouring in methods and techniques. Um, that help you to be a little bit more artistic, looking at shade. I actually saw an Instagram reel last week where somebody was painting with watercolour pencils these little ditzy flowers and I thought how sweet I'm going to have a go and I, I have just become obsessed. I cannot tell you how obsessed. I'm just going to share with you some other flowers that I've been painting using watercolour pencils and watercolour cardstock and a paintbrush and I am so thrilled these are just doodles this is a doodle sheet look at these I'm so thrilled they're just so nice to do this one I've added some extra layers of colour and this corner was just a I'm going to try something different and I wasn't really happy with this but these I could sit and doodle these all day long it's so relaxing but I quite liked the little whimsy flowers. I thought they were bright, cute. There's really no shading going on. It's a simple technique. So I'm going to share with you how I did this today. So without further ado, I'm going to share with you first the um, products that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to grab my catalogue. I'll be really quick with this. But I just wanted to highlight some products because some of them you may not be aware of. I'm going to use my Stampin' Up! watercolour pencils today. Now we have two different packs. Assortment 1 has more pencils. It has 13 and it has quite a lot of your basics because it has black and it has, um, I think it has white as well or does that come in the other one? Da -da 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 can't read um black and gray definitely your basics and it's got some really nice bright colors in there as well and that's 15 pounds for that set and then the other assortment is 10 pencils um and they and that has some different colors some different greens for example now i've got mine all in one box so i can never remember which one comes from which collection i'm also going to use today really quickly our fluid 100 watercolor paper so blink and you may miss that we actually do sell watercolor paper um, it's a really lovely quality and um, weight of watercolor paper now I do admit that I also buy watercolor paper in big packs big artist packs um, because I like to try different sorts and different textures. You know, they all come with different textures. Uh, but I'm today I'm going to use the Fluid 100. It's a cotton-based, thick paper. It's lovely to use. So I'm going to also use my Stamparatus, but only for the sentiment. And Stamparatus, the reason I wanted to highlight that today is Stamparatus costs £45.75. and pence. Today is the last day for celebration. So that's a great price point. If you've not got a uh, Stamparatus yet and you're still watching this on the 28th of February 2023 until 
I'm going to say 11 p.m., not midnight, because sometimes our um, promotions finish at 11 p.m. Um, if you purchased one online from me today, then you would qualify for a freebie from Celebration. Lots of products still available. And I'm also going to use these dies, Split Card Textures. Um, dies. They're £27 and you get two large dies in the pack. I'll share with you um, how I'm going to use those. Re really simple to use, but something a little bit different and it just makes the card just a bit different. And of course I'll be using our cardstock, um, the die cutting machine. I'm also going to use my heat embossing tool and I'm using this to dry the watercolours as we paint. So I'm just going to pop that card up there let me see if that's still in shot yes it is that's grand and I'm just checking my work area my workspace I've got a good field of view that's grand so I have a pencil sharpener I have my um, stamping up water painters and these come in a set of three which I didn't share with you from the catalogue there is a fine a medium and then this flat sort of palette shaped brush I'm going to mostly be using this medium one today but I will be using perhaps all of them but mostly this medium one I haven't got the bodies filled with water these um, water painters you actually unscrew the opposite way to what you think have a hollow body and you can fill them with water and they have a valve like a non-return valve, this black piece, so you can actually squeeze the water through the bristles, but I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to give this one a slight haircut because I've got a loose bristle there. Um, so I'm not using them with the bodies filled with water. I'm going to use my little trusty um, water pot, which I keep on my desk. Now, I have three packs of watercolour pencils because I run classes. I bought two packs of the classic or the set one and then I got one pack of the um, pack two and I just keep all of mine like this in a shallow um, uh, plastic it's actually a takeaway food box because it's easy for me to grab from my shelf and I can also see the colours from the end so if I'm searching for a colour I can actually see where it is I'm going to be using those and the other item I'm going to be using is a fine liner pen now I, I like journaling and so I use fine liner pens um, when I'm journaling and this is a, a set of three that I bought in a local stationery shop um, 0.1 millimeter 0.3 millimeters and 0.5 millimeters um, and they're just the nibs I could use my black stamp and write marker which is actually available to purchase singly however when I went to use mine um, the writing end um, to use to make the stems of the flowers um, it's quite dry and so I do need to re-ink it and then I went to my re-inkers and realized I didn't have basic black I have memento and I have stays on but I haven't got basic black so I've ordered the basic black ink refill, re-inker, and you can actually re-ink your stamping right markers. You cannot re-ink stamping blends. These are classed as uh, consumable items, but all the stamping right markers, dual ended, are re-inkable. Re so I have a basic black on, but I knew I had my fine liners from my journaling. So let's get cracking i'm going to just grab my trimmer i haven't pre-prepared anything any of the cardstock today so here we have the fluid 100 watercolor paper and i'm just going to remind myself how many sheets 10 sheets 825 i believe and I'm going to just cut myself a little square now from memory. I think it was seven centimetres, my original one. Let me just grab a ruler. Oops, sorry about that. I just knocked my camera stand. Oh, you see, my memory does serve me well sometimes. Seven centimetres square. And so you really don't need a lot just to do a cute little project like this. 
sweet little square um, and we'll cut the rest of the bits and pieces once we've done our watercoloring so this technique honestly I was just I'm just so <laughs> obsessed so we need our jar of water I'm going to grab my medium water brush and I'm going to start with yellow and I'm going to yes I will start with yellow and I'm going to just point out that the one of the key things if you're doing a small square like this or a small piece is actually composition just to work with odd numbers so I've worked with seven so seven of the larger flowers and five of the little flowers and it just makes the composition interesting I don't know how it works I'm not a graphic designer but working with odd numbers just works so I'm going to do the same composition I'm going to sort of do three and three and an odd one down here and you start with a yellow pencil and you just draw a little circle a hollow circle and then I'm going to draw another one here so I'm going to get my composition there's three and we'll do another three up here one two a little triangle maybe three can afford to go a bit higher up and then we'll do another one here so I'll just hold that up to the camera so you can see up close so I've done seven little circles of yellow watercolor pencil direct to the cards to the watercolor paper hi Shaz I can see you've joined. Hello, thank you. Oh, I'm just wrecking my desk now. Bear with me, everything's just slid. That's better. So I've got my yellow circles and a squeaky chair. <laughs> and I'm going to then choose the colour for my first flower. So I'm going to use Melon Mambo and it's a watercolour pencil and I'm going to wet my brush. I also have next to me just a piece of kitchen paper just in case of emergencies or it gets too wet and as I've unscrewed that I've seem to have loosened it again so just wet my brush and I'm going to take the watercolour off the tip of the pencil now a little tip is just slide that out of the way because as you do this you can often you know if you're just a bit sort of not really concentrating you can end up flicking little flick marks on I'm actually going to finish mine with some flicks anyway so you can see I've now picked up that watercolor onto that wet brush and I'm going to do my first flower I want you to think about drawing a little person we start with a circle here that's a head and then we're going to draw a circle for an arm, a circle for an arm, and a circle for a leg, and a circle for a leg. And you've got your first flower. How easy is that? Really, really easy. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to leave that colour sitting there. And I'm going to do another Melon Mambo one. And you get different um, finishes or different results depending on the amount of water that you have on your brush. So there's a head. There's an arm, there's an arm, there's a leg, bit more colour, and there's a leg. Nice and saturated colour. I could go paler by now just picking up some water and not picking up any colour. So let's try that. Let's try that on um, this one down here and let's see. And we could blend in a little bit of that yellow because each time you're adding water it will pick up the yellow from the center as well so that's a paler flower now I could go in now pick up some color and if I just tap where that pool of water is you can see you get that sort of running effect and you can actually let your color pool and run and move it around but it will only stay, it will always stay where that um, water is sitting initially. You can get different effects and different finishes if you use your heat tool. So I'm going to just pop that on level level two, and I'm holding it quite close. 
And what that does is it dries the water really quickly. And I will just hold that up to the camera and let you see. And when you first start doing this, you start to think, let's see if it's focusing, there we go. You start to think, gosh, that looks a little bit sort of messy really and not very neat or um, a bit naive, a bit simple. But I promise you, keep going and just keep trying different colours, adding different colours rather. So I'm going to have a look at pumpkin pie now, a nice bright orange, because watercolour is really quite forgiving. Believe me, I've just become obsessed. I keep saying that, but it's just fun and relaxing. So let's pop an orange one here. So there we go with a head. And you can make your petals as big as you like. Like um, and really, really sort of, I uh, can't describe it, simple, almost childlike. And what you can do is if you think, oh, well, I'd have some fancy shaped petals here instead of round, let's give it a bit more of a jagged edge or whatever. You can just pull that colour out. Not really a jagged edge, but a bit more of a frilly edged petal. Honestly, you don't have to be an artist. You do not have to be an artist to do this. It's just so, so simple. So we've got an orange one. Let's have another orange one over here and then we'll have a look at maybe rich razzleberry and see what we get with rich razzleberry. So again, pick up some water from the jar, pick up some paint from the watercolour pencil. And I just thought, what a lovely way of using, an additional way of using my watercolour pencils. I do use them to colour in those stamped images, but I'd never been as never been confident to actually use them to do watercolour paintings. I mean, like many other crafters, I don't believe that I'm an artist. I'm just going to dry that off and the fact that you've used a brush to wet the nib end doesn't damage your watercolour pencils this is what they're meant to be used for this is how artists use them they use them direct to paper and um, use them with the water and they use them like this so absolutely nothing wrong with using them I'm going to dry this orange one off And because we've got the um, heat tool, it means that impatient creative people like myself can actually do their painting and get them finished. You're not waiting for anything to dry. Now, I really loved Rich Razzleberry. I thought that that went really nicely. And you can see it's not that time consuming either. It's really quite quick and easy to do. So here we go again, so I'm going to do a petal for a head, a petal for an arm, a petal for an arm, let's grab a bit more, and every flower person needs two legs. So it's that five petal simple flower, and if you just keep thinking to yourself like that, head, two arms and legs, or we could do this one's doing a headstand. So we've got the head, two arms, get some more colour here. And of course you can turn your paper around and we'll have two legs in the air, just like me at dancing class. <laughs> there really simple flowers and that composition of seven flowers just in an undulating form just makes it interesting I'll dry those two off now let me share this progress so far up at the camera so you get a good view 
so here we go really simple but it's starting to build now those yellow centers they're still there and we can go into the yellow centers and we can actually sort of smudge those out with water add a little bit more water make it all a bit watery and we can pop the um, heat tool on and have a look and see what that's done just smudging those colors out pop the heat tool on So we've smudged those yellow centers out. Come on, focus. There we go. So thoughts so far. Pop some thoughts in the comments. Give me some feedback. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do those little blue ones. So I'm going to use balmy blue and yellow again. So the yellow really starts me with positioning. Where am I going to position the flowers? So I'm just going to do a tiny spot. This time it's not like a hollow spot. It's a one, two, three, four. And let's have another one down here, maybe. I'm going to try and leave this corner for the sentiment. One, two, three, four. Um, let's have another one over here. Yes, yeah, so the, the um, yellows really help me with my positioning. Now I'm going to switch to the fine water brush. I'm just going to make sure that's nice and clean and I'm going to take the balmy blue and I'll just pop that in the sharpener that gives me plenty of um, watercolour on the nib and I'll just pick up that colour again now this time I'm going to do a five petal flower but this time I'm actually instead of going to test that let me just see if I've got the right consistency instead of doing a sort of a round I'm just going to pop the nib of my brush like that I'm just going to turn my pit so I've got a head still two arms and let's do two legs down here more of a star shaped flower see all I'm doing is just resting the bristles of the brush it couldn't be easier I absolutely promise you who's going to have a go who's got watercolour pencils and who might be tempted to have a little go then you can see I've got a bit more concentration of colour on that one so no problem I'll just make the next one over here Maybe a little bit paler. There, really, really easy. And all this is doing is sort of filling in a little bit, giving another bit of interest. matter which way up I do and the reason I'm turning it is because I want the thinnest point of the bristles to be the outside of the petal and I'm just going to bob the um, heat tool on again thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw those stems and this is the bit that really frightened me to start with I thought well this is this is drawing this is this is freehand drawing all you want to do is make sure your stems are coming down because flowers grow up and then add some extras so I'm going to use 
I think I use my 0 0.3 on this one. But I'll just start with my, or shall I go back to 0 0.3? I'm just going to test. I'm going to use that little piece. I can't remember. That's 0 0.3. And that's not quite one. There's not much in it. I'm going to use not point one fine liner, and I'm just going to draw a stem downwards. So my flower is growing down, but with a bit of a curl, and a bit of a sweep, and a bit of a sweep, and a bit of a. I might just extend that one. A bit of a sweep down. And just keep drawing those stems and you can go behind and then you can add some extras I'm going to just draw a little curl up there a little bit of an extra one there we'll have some branches to some of these stems and a little bit there and that way we can drop some extra little bits on and some leaves We've got our stems, so it's building. And now I'm going to go back with my finest tip. Just make sure that's nice and clean. And I'm going to go back with um, Rich Razzleberry. And I'm going to add some buds to some of those upward stems. And all they are is dots. So a little dot on the end. Dot, dot. And let's have a dot on the top of that one. And again, it just adds some extra interest to the actual project. And then we can add, in fact, let's add a couple more of those wispy stems. Try not to smudge. And we can add some more of those. There, just a bit more interest. Now we can add some leaves. And then we'll give that to dry. So I'm going to use Old Olive. And still with the fine brush. Feels really watery, so I'm going to be quite careful and just do just a little. It's just the hint. That little hint of green. Yeah, just a little bit more water, and then we'll just dry this off. And we'll see how it looks. So I'm not drawing a leaf shape, I'm just adding a splodge. That's the impression of a leaf. It's not difficult. Yeah, let's have a leaf on the top of this one. really quickly and we'll just dry that all off and the thing that's going to really make those flowers pop is my black watercolour my fine brush And I'm going to do a little dot of black in the centre of each one. I think I even did black in the centre of the little... I think I'm going to leave my blue flowers. Just a little dot of black just makes those flowers really pop. I'm going to give that another quick blast. And the 
the last thing I'm going to do is give it some speckles. So I'm going to just take a, I don't want anything too dark. Um, I'm going to find grey actually, I think black would be too dark and I know I've got a basic grey in here so let's go with the basic grey and the fine brush and I'll just pick a little bit of that up and of course you can practice on the back yeah that's quite a nice fine speckle and I'm just flicking that all over because I like a splat and a, and a speckle I'm trying to just avoid this bottom because I will do the sentiment down there and I'm going to just hold this up to camera and see what we think yeah so the, what do you think that's so sweet and so easy quick it didn't take me any time at all really easy to do I mean you could spend more time if you wanted to I even think this one's better than this one you could spend more time adding some more color because the minute you do one flower and dry it you can actually go back in with more color and move that color around so let's finish this off and make it into a card and then I'm going to share with you um, oops excuse me throwing things around I will share with you if I have enough time at the end how I actually did the other flowers I won't make that into a card I'm first I'm going to put my lid on my water jar so I actually haven't prepared anything other than I did find this um, poppy parade card base although I've not used poppy parade I think that that actually goes quite well so I think we'll go with the card base poppy parade that saves us a minute or two I do need a piece of basic white as the top layer so that's going to be let's make it 14 centimeters by nine and a half centimeters which just takes that layer down by a centimeter and that should be still big enough to use with the dies I also need something to go behind that um, lattice work and I've just used a piece of um, designer series paper and this is from the celebration big pack if you spend 90 pounds you can get this big pack of DSP and I quite liked it because it was a lovely zingy color but not too busy a pattern so I'm just going to take that down to just a little bit smaller so a little bit slimmer than nine and a half and about 13 and a half just so it pops behind so that's that really quickly I've just realized I haven't got any black cardstock out of my cupboard to do that mat behind and I will get some in a tick but I'm going to just show you those fabulous split card texture dies there are two dies in the pack and I use the lattice one on my original card and then there's this one, this lovely floral one which I might just try and see what it looks like with the flowers so I think I'll just try that one this time they give that lovely, well it says on the tin doesn't it, split card it gives a really nice split card texture and I'm just going to, I can see I've still got some white in my die from a previous project so I'm just going to pop those bits out if you leave cardstock in a die and then try and die cut again it never die cuts properly so always make sure your dies are nice and clean so I'll just grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine and we'll go with the big one these do fit through the mini Ooh but as I need a bit of weight training on my arms <laughs> we'll use the big machine so just your regular sandwich for die cutting I'm going to pop that in on a very slight angle because I've got a straight edge and if you put a straight edge through the rollers you get that clunk clunk now you can position this with a bit of a border around so I'm just going to pull that in a little bit so I've got quite a reasonable border. 
at the top and at the sides and I'm hoping that that's straight it just looks slightly off so if you position any die that has a straight edge to it on a slight angle it will just wind through your machine without that clunk clunk you get a slight clunk at the end as it finishes but it makes it a lot easier now I need to just expel that from um, and I just oh no I've got my dye brush here just bear with me my dye brush already attached to my take your pick tool I'm going to just give that a brush along that should expel quite a lot of the pieces hopefully that should pop out Excuse me. there we go I've still got a few pieces but I can deal with those later just one or two that's nice see the majority of your pieces just fall out and i'll deal with those later i'll just pop them next to the bin so we've got that lovely lattice and let's see what it looks like with that green behind nice very fresh and what does it look like with the floral on top that looks really pretty i'm just going to grab a piece of black cardstock very quickly And we'll just cut a piece down for a suitable mat and if we remember my original watercolor piece was seven centimeters by seven so for this one we'll just go seven and a half by seven and a half just that little hint of black should really make those bright colors stand out So there, that just really makes those bright colours stand stand out. Now before we glue everything together, I'm going to heat emboss that little sentiment on the bottom. And I chose a really small, simple sentiment from uh, the stamp set, Something Fancy. We have happy birthday and congratulations. I did toy with the idea of thank you and then popping it up as another layer. But I thought, actually, I want the flowers to speak for themselves so i'm going to go with happy birthday and i've chosen to use my stamparatus for this because this is a cling mount stamp and it's a very fine cling mount stamp so if you can see stamparatus very cleverly has this um grid on the plates so i can actually line up when I turn my stamp over, so I'm not actually looking at the sticker. If we look at the sticker, it looks wonky. If we actually look at the letters on the red rubber and we line them up along the lines of the grids on the plate, and now I can pop my piece in. Because it's red rubber um, cling mount, it has the foam backing, so I don't need the foam mat in my stamparatus. I will need a magnet. Oh, and they are so strong, so I'll slide it to the edge. <laughs> and I'm just going to have a look at whereabouts to position it. And incidentally, these grid lines um, correspond with the grid lines on here. So you can see where you, I can see that it's this grid line here that the sentiment will be stamped along. And I can to move that up a little bit so if we go slightly over and we go about there that should be perfect and I just need to grab my embossing kit so I'm going to give that a quick rub with the embossing buddy and my Versamark ink Some pressure and I'm just going to ink that again just to make sure and that's another benefit of the stamparatus you can go in and 
especially when you're heat embossing you can actually ink twice so I know that's lovely and straight I'm going to bring in my embossing powder tray now I use coffee filters uh, filter papers to catch the excess I love this tray it stops everything going all over my desk but quite honestly I can't be bothered to unscrew this that's really lazy but hey I'm just admitting that these little pieces of filter paper mean that I can quickly pour all of that back into the tub time's precious when you're crafting don't you agree with me and I've already got my heat tool out because I've been drying my watercolour so I'm just going to go and heat that up wait for the magic there we go hopefully you can see that happening now I'm just going to point something out I'm terrible for clicking on my heat tool and then holding it like this and did you know that Stampin Up's heat tools have a thermostatic control inside when they overheat they stop working so you'll try and turn it back on if, especially if you're doing a project where you're heating and drying something so um, I asked my husband to have a look at my heat tool because it had stopped working I thought it was the switch that had gone faulty and he opened it up and he said it's got a thermostatic off switch inside so you must have covered this up so that's just a tip if you do the same when you switch it on here just switch it on and then reposition your hand to lower down and if indeed yours does overheat and the thermostatic control knocks it off just pop it to one side to cool down and it will within a few minutes once it's cooled down you can feel the body go back to it and see if it turns back on again if it's not cooling down fast enough for you because you're impatient like me you can give it a blow through here and it should help it to cool down so that's just a bit of technical insider knowledge from yours truly and luckily I've got a hubby who's pretty technical as well because he's an engineer so he was able to tell me that I hadn't indeed broken my heat tool so now we're just going to assemble this card And I think this technique with the little flowers would look fantastic on a long card, just doing a whole long um, horizontal image. Now I've used um, Tombow multi-purpose because it's a nice strong glue and because I've been heating up the card stock to dry the flowers it does tend to curl a bit but if you persuade it back whilst it's gluing it will go nice and flat again and I'm going to stick my um, DSP behind my die cut piece and if you've left a really nice border using those dies you can get plenty of glue on that piece and I will just put a few little dots I didn't obviously with the lattice that's all just left but you can just pop a few little dots there I absolutely love these dies I think they're ever so clever really just something a bit different in fact I'm going to drop that I'm going to drop that that way there we go got my knickers in a twist then I'm going to do it that way and then I can see got your wiggle room with your tombow Yeah, I think they're just something a bit different you can use them portrait or landscape this way or that way just something different and let's see what that composition looks like there we go it's all coming together we'll glue this down flat and I think we'll pop our flower layer up on some dimensionals so 
So I hope I've inspired you to have a go with your watercolour pencils if you've got them and if you haven't got them you know where you can order them from and have some fun. I'm going to grab some dimensionals. I've got some black ones here somewhere. Have I? Yes, I've got some black ones. Let's use them. Just one in each corner. Excuse my horrible hands. I've really given them some knocking about with the landscaping this weekend. I've got no no lovely fingernails anymore. And my hands are really rough. I've been putting supersonic hand cream on at night time as I go to sleep and it's helping a bit. Um, but yeah, working hands at the moment. They'll come back. So let's position this. I'm positioning it up a little bit from the bottom, sort of two thirds. My preference is not to go central with everything. I don't really um, enjoy too much symmetry. I like things just slightly off to one side. And I think that that shows up this lovely die cut um, base layer as well. So same but different. You can see I've made slightly bigger flowers on this one. These are a bit smaller, but they're both pretty. I'm really happy with those. I'm just going to hold this one right up to camera so you can see it finished. Let's have a look. There you go. Oh, hi, Kathy. You're a new face to me. Thank you for joining. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. I will just share with you how I did. Let me bring those bigger flowers in. So these. I'll just leave my cards there and just share with you how I did these flowers because I just really enjoyed doing these. I got myself a big piece of watercolour cardstock from an artist pad and it, I was inspired by an artist on um, a reel on Instagram and what they did, so I'll leave my water again. What they did was with the fine brush or a fine brush and they were using proper artist brushes. Well, our stamping up water brushes are just as good. And watercolour pencil. Now let's start with something a little bit dark. So you need something in the middle. So I'm going to go with um, real red and I'm going to pick up the colour from the tip again. And this time I'm going to actually do a little circle of dots. So if I hold that up, you can see I've got a little circle of dots of wet watercolour. I'm now going to use my medium brush just with water and I'm going to do a petal. I'm going to pick up some colour from one of the dots and do a petal shape and this probably won't show up on camera very well so I'm just going to do a petal shape and fill it in with water. I'm going to turn it slightly and do another petal shape and I'm still thinking head, two arms and two legs because that just helps me um, just helps me to think about the shape and size and the layout. There we are and pick up some of that. I'll bring it back up to camera so you can see it because it's probably looking fairly invisible at the minute but trust me. I'll do another arm at this side. Sorry, I've gone quiet. I'm concentrating now. This is really relaxing and I've got my tongue stuck out probably. I'm going to do another petal down here so I've got a head and two arms and I'm going to do two legs down here and honestly believe me I am not an artist. 
I was really lucky as a child in that my I grew up in a very creative household. My mum's really creative and a good artist. My stepdad was a fabulous artist and my stepbrother is a professional artist. And I've always loved art and and art at school, but I've never felt like I was really good at art. Now I will just bring this up to camera because it's a very pale, very pale flower at the moment. As I move it around, you can see the wet bits. And now what I'm going to do is add more colour. So I'm going to go back to my real red and with the big brush or the medium brush, should I say, just add more colour. like this in the centre and with the petals that are still wet this was the first one so it's a bit drier with the petals that are still wet you can see that colour runs into where the water is still sitting and then you can just work on that colour you can add if you leave areas free of colour you can see it's building up and then you go back to the little dots in the middle and blur them a bit and you can add extra colour so I'm going to just dry that layer So no pencil sketches required. I'm going to find Cajun Craze because I found that Cajun Craze was a lovely colour to add to the centre. Yeah, no pencil sketching required. There's too much water on that so I'm going to dry it a bit and go back in. You really honestly do not need to be anything other than a stamping up crafter with some stamping up watercolour pencils. I'm just going to pull that Cajun craze out. So I'm layering up the colour now and it's just so nice and relaxing. I was a bit apprehensive about sharing this um, technique so I thought well if any artists are watching they think I'm crazy or maybe think I'm rubbish or what and I honestly don't care because I'm just having such fun learning how to use my stamping up products in a different way and if you're watching me you can see just how easy it is keep adding water because that water gives the color somewhere to run does that make sense you're sort of making each petal a little pool of water there's probably lots of technical terms but i don't know now i've got this little, little flower and i might just go back to rail red so I've, so far i've only used two colors and let's just drop some real red on there and see where that runs to. Keep adding some water on. And just keep dropping little bits of colour onto the petals. And then we'll just give that a final dry off with the heat tool
and I'll share with you how I learned to do the leaves because I didn't quite know how to do the leaves. I'm just going to go back to old olive. It is my favourite green. I didn't quite know how to do the leaves, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go straight to the card and do a little V. Really simply. Clean brush with plenty of water on and then pull it out to a leaf shape. got more saturated colour down at this end try and perhaps leave a bit of white in the middle and it doesn't matter if it's a wiggly shape but just pull that out to a leaf shape move that colour around let's put a stem on the leaf going to behind the flower and let's give it a blast off with the heat tool just bring that back to the camera and show you how that's turned out probably quite a pale color but if you just build that up across your piece of paper you could do a whole background layer and then stamp a sentiment or a die cut sentiment across there that would make a really pretty card and I just did this piece here while I was having a video call with mum after tea yesterday for about 30 40 minutes we were just chatting mum was busy card making and I just doodled with watercolor pencils and a brush and a pot of water and I thoroughly enjoyed myself I just couldn't believe that I could paint flowers like that I was just so happy just doodling on this one I added some of those little sprigs with little sort of buds on the end as well so I really think I might make, make might make these two into cards and I'll put them on my Facebook page. So that's it everyone today. Let me just tidy up a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed watching me as I've learned a new technique and shared it with you. Just something different to do with your watercolour pencils. I really do hope I've inspired you to have a go and if I have please share on the crafty bees um on the crafty bee hive rather um thank you renee that's lovely now i'm just going to turn my camera around this way and i'll try Ooh, i've got a swinging arm i'll try and flick it back to my face but if i lose you i'll say goodbye now <laughs> and i'll see you next time and thanks for joining me if I don't lose you, I'll give you a smile and a wave. Bear with, but bye for now.